If you have your Bibles, you'd like to turn with me now to John 16. I'd like to start with verse uh, 16. So that's on page 1069 in the Pew Bibles. If you would like to use a Pew Bible, and I always encourage you to bring your own personal Bible to church. So beginning with verse 16, John 16. In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me. Some of his disciples said to one another, what does he mean by saying in a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me? and because I am going to my Father. They kept asking, what does he mean by a little while? We don't understand what he is saying. Now Jesus saw that they wanted to ask him about this, so he said to them, are you asking one another what I mean when I said in a little while you will see me no more, then after a little while you will see me? I tell you the truth, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come, but when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into the world. So with you. Now is your time of grief, but I will see you again, and you will rejoice. And no one will take away your joy. In that day you will no longer ask me anything. I tell you the truth, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now you have not asked anything in my name. Ask and you will receive, and your joy will be complete. Though I have been speaking figuratively, a time is coming when I will no longer use this kind of language, but will tell you plainly about my Father. In that day you will ask in my name. I am not saying that I will ask the Father on your behalf. No, the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and entered the world. Now I'm leaving the world and going back to the Father. Then Jesus' disciples said, Now you are speaking clearly without figures of speech. Now we can see that you know all things and you do not even need to have anyone ask you questions. This makes us believe that you came from God. You believe at last, Jesus answered, but a time is coming and has come When you will be scattered each to his own home, you will leave me all alone. Yet I am not alone, for my Father is with me. I have told you these things so that in me you might have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. In this passage and in the context of it, Jesus is trying to prepare his disciples for his leaving. Incidentally, from John chapter 13 on to the end of the Gospel of John, it is mostly written about the last week of Jesus' life on earth. So the disciples do not realize that in just a few days, Jesus is going to be arrested and tried and crucified. And so Jesus is trying to prepare them somewhat for this happening. After his death, they would not see him until his resurrection. Even though it only lasted for three days, to the disciples it would seem a whole lot longer. I can hardly imagine what it would feel like to know that Jesus was sort of out of our reach and we're not even able to talk to him for a time. Like us, the disciples did not understand. 
Verse 18, what is this that he says? And so they were trying to grasp it. And they couldn't understand this idea that he was leaving. And then in a little while, he was coming again. Now, the question that the disciples ask him is very much the kind of question I have often in my life. I might often have a prayer, Lord, what are you doing in my life? Something unexpected happens to me and I cannot see any coordination, how it fits. We tend to measure our calling by how it looks to us. And if things look pretty well to us, then we give God credit, think that things are going along pretty well. But as long as it feels right to us, we might feel that we are in the calling of God. But then when something changes and something presents a tremendous challenge before us, you might be like me where I question and say, what is this, Lord? And I can be among those who do not understand what Jesus is doing in my life. I believe that's where the disciples were at this time. Now, they had had all kinds of struggles and challenges up to this point. But then Jesus coming to them at this time, and he had alluded to the fact that he was going to die and even would raise again. But the disciples didn't seem to grab onto that very well. Jesus would explain then a principle of following the Spirit. Serving the Lord can very often involve struggle within ourselves or with things around us. Struggle might seem out of place. It's like when I step out to do something for God, as long as it goes well, I think, well, I did that right, and this is what the Lord wanted me to do. But when I step out to do something positive, and the first thing happens, I run in to a big obstacle of some type, then I wonder, did I make the right choice or not? And what is God doing? And then... Jesus even points down in verse 20, he points out, Most assuredly I say to you that you will weep and lament. You will be sorrowful. Now these are not words I like to hear very well. They don't seem to fit in the calling of the Lord. When I am called of the Lord... I want to see successes happen. I want to see things that I can even number. I'm even guilty of sometimes saying, well, how many got saved? Well, what's not important about one? One person gets saved. Everyone. So sometimes I want to measure even what God is doing in human values well how many how much how far how great we want to set the scales sort of in human terms god doesn't always work that way in our own experience we have the witness of what jesus says in our own life i don't know very many ministers or Christian workers that have not experienced difficulty. I remember just in the past week or so learning, and I believe their names was Harsh, that went to China. Does that ring a bell? The Harsh's husband and wife. They never came back. Never came back. That's right. Who would think that that's a success? But we don't know the particulars of what happened even. Randy, that was Urban Marsh's brother. Okay. What was his name? I, I, don't, I don't remember. Alvin. Alvin. Alvin Harsh. Okay. And his wife. 
Well, who would think that a person that steps out in ministry is going to have weeping, lamenting, and be sorrowful? It's like, Lord, it's not the way it's supposed to be. I step out in faith, and yet the first thing, I experience difficulty. And Jesus leads us sometimes in ways we don't understand. And their testimonies are powerful, though, when they share with us even the difficulties that they had. Sometimes my difficulties don't seem to compare with those I've heard other people have had. Oh, yes, I've had a few struggles here and there. But when I look at other people and what they have endured for the glory of God. And so sometimes I believe we can be like the disciples here, hearing these words that Jesus is leaving and then he goes on to say weeping and lamenting and sorrow is going to be a part of your life. But Jesus, who is the overcomer, would encourage the disciples with the hope of joy and his coming returning. In verse 20, he said, but your sorrow will be turned in to joy. And I can tell that that is what Jesus does. And he uses this illustration, verse 21. A woman, when she is in labor, has sorrow because her hour has come. But as soon as she has given birth to the child, she no longer remembers the anguish for the joy that a human being has been born into the world. Now, I can testify to the pain of a child being born. I was there. It, it was hard on my back. I was there. And the doctor said, push. And I pushed the chair all the way across the room. And the nurse says, he means her, not you. But I am sure that after the birth, we did not remember the anguish, that the joy that a human being had been born. What a wonderful experience it was to be present when our sons were born. And when our first son was born in 84, it was a relatively new thing for father to go in with the mother. In fact, I don't think the nurse there liked it very well. She told me to go outside the room there and wait until she come to get me. Well, if I'd have waited until she come and got me, I'd still be standing there because she didn't come back. I thought, the baby's going to be born before I get in there. And so I just took it upon myself to go on in myself. And boy, did she give me a mean look. But that was all right with me. And it was a wonderful experience for me. Jesus compares the joy to come as immeasurable. And so, yes, we do experience struggles in, even in our calling. You know, we are disciples of the Lord, essentially. We are trying to bear the image of Jesus. And we're going to struggle at times. I like the verse from 1 Corinthians 2, 9. But it is written, eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor even has it entered into the heart of man those things that God has prepared for those who love him. We know that even with the struggles that we have, it's not going to compare to the joy that we soon will experience. Jesus is the great overcomer. He shows us that he has overcome the power of death and the grave. And so this little while I will be gone from you, and then a little while you will see me, 
seems to apply initially to the crucifixion and then the resurrection of Christ. So you will not see me for a little while and then you will see me. So the disciples witnessed him living again and the sorrow of Jesus' death soon turned to immeasurable joy in their lives. Today, we have confidence we serve a living Lord. Jesus is alive and is living right now. And you and I are serving a living God. And even if we experience sorrow, it will soon be joy. And even if we do have struggles in this world, they will soon be turned around into victory. Psalms 30, verse 5, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. The disciples seem to gain more understanding. They seem to understand his going away much more than they did before. Jesus had promised them power in the Lord. Verse 26, in that day you will ask in my name. Now, asking a prayer in Jesus' name is more than just a tagline at the end of a prayer. We must pray in the authority of Jesus Christ, and he instructs us to do that right here in this passage. The disciples begin to understand Jesus leaving them. And so in the ascension, when Jesus ascended into heaven, they seem to understand that Jesus was going to heaven and would soon return. And now the disciples at that point receive the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in a special way. And the angels told them in Acts chapter 1, verse 11, that in the same way that Jesus ascended into heaven, he shall return the same way. If you're interested in the specifics of Jesus' return to receive the church to himself, look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. It gives you vivid details and illustrations of Jesus' return. You and I today now live in anticipation of Christ's return. It would seem like there is very little, if any, prophecies to be fulfilled until he comes. I would like all of us to live in anticipation of his return. You know, um, I feel sometimes sad at the way I let some of the struggles or problems I have affect me. Sometimes even small things can bother me quite a bit, especially in the perspective of eternity. We used to have this saying up at the mines that a hundred years from now, you, you won't worry about it. Do I have travail? Well, some. Do you have travail, tribulation? I'm sure you can, likely do. But my sorrow will be soon turned to joy. Verse 33 seems to sum up the things that Jesus is trying to say here. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Greater is he that's within us than, is, than he that is in the world. Jesus is our overcomer. And we can be overcomers through him. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, you are leading us on a trip through this life. And Lord, I just thank you that you have demonstrated to us all that you are the overcomer 
and you give us the strength and power to overcome as well. So Lord, if there are things that we are struggling with right now in our lives, they may seem so huge now. We don't know what to do. I pray we'll put greater trust in you. We bring them to you in prayer, Lord, and we trust you to walk with us. Lead us through whatever difficulty we might be having. You are the overcomer. You have also made us overcomers as well. I thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.